And the next stage after this is to uh, uh, effectively um, set up our water material. Because at the moment, as you can see, it's it literally it's just a flat plane with a bump on it and does not look very good. Uh, we're going to ever essentially change uh, change it to displaced and turn off the foam layer and a couple of other little uh, tricks that I'll show you. Okay, so this uh, this bump's looking a lot better. We're getting a little bit more of the light refre reflecting off it. Uh, it might be a little bit too uh, too large, uh, but you can simply go in and scale it down. Okay, so we will come into our C object and double click on it and tick displaced water surface and increase the global wave control the agitation to about 80 percent uh, 50 is generally sort of lake water agitated lake water so 70 would be a calm ocean 90 would be a very rough ocean so around 75 percent maybe 80 percent and right click on the material edit material and go into the highlights or turn off the foam layer first and make sure you click on the second layer go to the highlights and increase the intensity to almost 100 and the size to shiny uh, 100% and what this is if you look at uh, water close up you get very very shiny spots of specularity <clears throat> you don't get uh, you don't get dull or, or matte sort of reflections. What happens, when, uh, you get those sorts of reflections when you're up at, in an aircraft looking down. And you, what you'll also find is also the anisotropic highlighting. Um, it becomes much more stretched when you're out uh, in an aircraft. It'll be f uh, far more, uh, it'll be more dull and also stretched uh, to a lot a longer, uh, it'll be elongated. But since we're so close, we're going to max these out almost. And come across to the transparency tab. And we will uh, change the fade out. Say, so let's just decrease that because we're now closer to the water. So we want to maybe see through a little bit at the, uh, at the ocean edge. We can change the colors uh, as well. So for the darker color, we're going to go with 26, 36, 36, which is a, you can see the comparison between the two here, it's more of a green, dark green. And with the aqua, we want it to be more of a light blue, so we'll go with 157, 216, and 252, so it's uh, just a, a nicer blue rather than that, uh, that aqua. And for the turn reflective with angle, we'll uh, let's change that to about 70% and that's going to uh, increase the reflectiveness as it gets further away. So we can actually decrease the fading out because the reflectiveness is going to be it's going to be quite reflective and we want to see still see through in the foreground. All right. So uh, we've set up all of that and we are almost ready for a break. So we're going to do a, let's do another uh, preview. I'm going to just uh, set up my ecosystems again to dynamic. Make sure that they're both on. Dynamic and OK. Let's go with the preview render. All right, and we're back. And there is our preview render, rendered in 1 minute 37 seconds. So it increases the, the time by displacing this water surface. But you can really see how the reflections of this terrain are starting to get uh, messed up in the reflection. You can also see that green tint there. And also these waves coming in on the left uh, really add a hell of a lot of uh, realism and, uh, and really immerse, immerse you uh, in, in that scene. The one thing I'd say about this uh, this ocean is it is at the moment one too dark around here and two too reflective. Uh, that's uh, a, a, a bit of a uh, observation that I've uh, made. So the fade out color we we'll probably stay with that, but we just decrease the reflectivity and decrease the uh, 
uh, the fading out to lighten it up and you'll get to a point where you'll start to see the terrain uh, the, the this terrain coming through underneath and I think we've got it around about now so if I uh, just do an area render again the area renders are massive time, time savers Right, so this will start rendering in just a moment. It is dynamic, um, populating those uh, ecosystems purely because we have that reflective uh, ecosystem in the reflection anyway. All right, so this is a little bit lighter. I might actually go through and change those uh, that that fade out color. Um, because it is still very dark there, um, but if I was to go to a final render, uh, you start to see it. Uh, it actually cleans itself up quite a bit. Uh, we can also see the terrain sort of disappearing through here. That's the terrain underneath the water, and you can almost see it through there as well. It's a bit of a blue. And uh, but for now, uh, I'll do a final render. We'll come back, and you'll be able to see that before we move on to ZBrush. Alright, so there is our final uh, final render. Uh, 23 minutes and 51 seconds, so quite a, a big jump, but you can see the uh, the difference. Um, we there is a lot of uh, a lot of optimization that can go into these bumps. There's a lot of small details you're not seeing that are being rendered. There's also uh, customization in the water uh, which could be done. Uh, the scale is a little bit too uh, too small and uh, but but nevertheless uh, this is the result. Now a couple of things I just want to point out uh, in using the same red brown rock for our dark and lighter areas what it's done is it carries across any uh, larger changes in color. Uh, for instance, this uh, dark uh, stain here uh, that looks like water's been uh, running down off this par uh, portion of the la of the landscape, or, or dirt has been eroding down. And you can see there's it's darker, and then it gets lighter as it goes onto the lighter rock. Now, if we use two different materials there we would have a completely different uh, result. You wouldn't have that uh, that stain continuing down across there. So that's that's a, a really cool little um, uh, tidbit about uh, using the same material. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was this, uh, this color of the water. Now through here you can see it's nice and light and this is because we've decrease the murkiness of the water so it's you can almost see the terrain clearly through there aside from the uh, displaced water then as we get down in here we've got this darker patch through here and then we've got a lighter patch here and it continues to be light through here and then we've got this hugely dark area which also comes in along through here and it sort of comes peaks in here and then it stops here and then there's a bit more there. Now you might be forgiven for thinking that's the shadow of this but it's actually not that shadow if you look it comes down here and obviously there but this one comes across here and you can see there's a small shadow through there. But what this is, uh, what this is here is the water uh, murkiness. If you sort of stand back a little bit, you can you can see that this is transparent, uh, nicely transparent water area where we can sort of see the the uh, the rock bed. So uh, there we have it. We're going to move on to our next video now, which is sculpting the uh, Z brush. Uh, formation, which we're going to sort of place here on the on the right, in some uh, in some way, you could stretch it across the whole base, uh, just to give us a little bit more of a uh, feeling like we're we're composed and we're we're sort of set up on some sort of structure, which is in the foreground uh, here. And I'm sure uh, more people uh, there'll be people out there who have uh, much better ideas than I do. Um, I just sort of follow what uh, what I'm. 
uh, what I think of first, and then I, I try and bash that out. But if you've got any sort of ideas you can think of, you know, you could also take this uh, object into ZBrush and uh, paint in some ex extra features and uh, and do whatever you, you like with it. But uh, that's, uh, that's that one for now. We'll move on to ZBrush.